Stuart Bloor. Welcome to episode three. I hope you're enjoying them so far. If you are, why not share them on your own social media platforms, Twitter, Facebook, Google+, etc. If you do, that would really be appreciated. Lots of tackle room chat and of course, bankside activity. And that's where we're heading right now. The rod's out and as you can see from my umbrella, a little bit of rain today, but that doesn't bother the fish. They're wet already. While I'm waiting for a bite, I'm going to have me an apple and a cup of tea. I've been here a couple of hours. As I expected, I would get my first bite as we approach dusk. <laughs> it was a lovely pull round. A few little taps first of all. I was wondering whether it was a, a roach or something. Plucking at the boilie, but no, it's a chub. Not a big fish actually, but as always, very welcome indeed. Anyway, let me net this one and I'll show it to the camera. There are quite a lot of decaying leaves on the canal bed, so what I'm doing is I'm casting out. In fact, I just had someone there who's dropped off. <laughs> I've got the leaf back and that's a little bit of a setup. of course. I've hooked it again. But you can see the point that I'm making on the retrieve, picking up those leaves. So what I'm doing, could use PVA bags, of course, but what I'm doing is that I'm casting out and I'm allowing the bait to settle very gently and then tightening so that it doesn't pull the lead at all. So the bait is sitting there on top of the leaf or whatever is on the bed of the canal at the time. I'm only hooking the leaves if I'm deciding to recast. A winter's afternoon becomes a winter's evening, becomes a winter's night. I love this time of the day during the winter. No better place to be than by the water's edge. Only an angler would understand that comment. As darkness set in, so did a shoal of bream. Now I'm fishing with 16 mil boilies, so the small bream couldn't take one down, but they were certainly plucking at it and I could see plenty of activity on the rod tip. But the bigger fish, they certainly obliged. And as you can see, fish on the bank. I also caught small chub, nothing special, nothing monstrous, but you know what? I've been fishing, I've enjoyed it, and that's what it's all about. Like many people, I've got a social media presence. I'm on Twitter, you can follow me on there. I've got a Facebook page. Give that a like if you're on Facebook as well. And of course, you can check out my angling website. I've been doing a blog based on my fishing adventures that week. Every Saturday, one has been released since July 2003. That's a lot of words and pictures that have made it onto the internet. A lot of folks say to me, that's dedication, that's commitment. Well, yes, of course it is, but it's also a labor of love as well. I'm back a day later and I'm on the same canal, but a different spot. When I ended the session yesterday, what I did, although it was dark, I found a place that I wanted to come back to. It was quite overgrown, although the vegetation has died off, lots of stuff that still needed to be cleared, just chopped down really with my landing net pole. I did that yesterday, and the reason why I did it then, so that today I could come and drop in nice and quiet, rather than causing all the disturbance. And the reason why I have chose a different swim is that yesterday, session one, I was fishing the boat channel. The water temperature's okay, so the fish will become active after dark. They'll move around, but this session is a daytime one. The canal's quite clear, so I'm not expecting the fish to be out there necessarily mooching around 
in the boat channel, they'll be looking for some cover. So there's actually overhanging bushes in the place where I am. Well, I say bushes, very minimal. There's not that much cover on the stretch, but this is probably as good as it gets. Hence, I've decided to fish this particular spot. And also, I put some boilies out there as well. So, I've just cast out, got the boilie out there, put a few more pellets out as well, and I'm hopeful. Although it's a clear, bright, sunny day, and the canal's very clear as well, Nevertheless, I'm still hopeful of a fish. I realized after fishing here for some time that I've got a big snag right on the spot where I put my bait. I don't know how big exactly, but what I do know is it's an immovable object. I would imagine, because I've got trees behind me that are overhanging the canal, it's a large branch that has fallen in at some point. Anyway, I've been forced to do what I didn't want to do in the first place, switch into the boat channel, which is, is free. Not ideal in these conditions, but I'm fishing, my bait's in the water, do you know what? That means I've got a chance. No matter how much the odds are stacked against me, I've got a chance. Well, I said my bait's in the water and I had a chance. The nicest job of the week so far. Fantastic. I'm over the proverbial moon. Growing up as a kid in the 60s and the early 70s, my dad didn't drive, no one in the family fished therefore I really had it stacked against me so one of the things I did was I joined the local fishing club which was based at Hurstill Labour Club and they used to run contests where we would all get in the coach or the charabang as many people called it even back then get in the coach and go off somewhere for a day's fishing or five hours fishing but of course it would take take up the day and i really loved it this was the time before commercials so when you went on a river or a pool it really was down to your draw and your skill on the day i thoroughly enjoyed those years that i fished with the labor club and one of my memories is from 1977, I would be 14 stroke 15 at the time, I was actually the young angler of the year. So fantastic memories there. I don't match fish now, not really interested in that, but some great memories back from the 1970s with Hurstill Labour Angling Club. back and I've had a few days without fishing due to car problems. Now for most anglers a few days away from the water's edge is the norm but for me it's like doing cold turkey. Anyway I can't begin to tell you how great it is to be back on the canal and this is truly one of those sessions where it's just great to be here. Catching is a bonus although of course that's what I want to do. Of all the fish that are in the British waters, the one with the widest diet must be the chub. They will take anything from artificial baits to real baits to lives, deads, anything you can think of, a chub will definitely be interested. On this occasion though, in this particular blog entry, I'm fishing with boilies. Now I know that if I were to use bread or worm or something like that, then I would definitely catch more fish. But I'm very focused in my angling all the time and certainly this week I want to tempt one of the bigger fish and what I've found with boilies whether it's for carp, barbel, bream, tench or chub is that I tend to catch the bigger fish when I use that particular bait. Now it doesn't mean to say 
that I won't catch small ones, especially with chub, because they have got such cavernous mouths that even a one pound or a two pound chub will certainly pick up a 16 mil boilie. But what I have found is that it does separate the bigger fish from the smaller ones. And my type of angling, I would sooner catch one really good chub rather than say 10 half a pound fish. It's just a matter of choice really. I'm fishing with Frankfurter sausage boilies, 16 mil, and I'm fishing over loose boilies and also pellets called the edge. And they really smell nice. If I were a fish, I'd definitely be interested in those. In addition, as always, I'm soaking my baits, dipping them, making sure that the hook bait at least has given me the edge when it's out there. Well, the tip pulled round. I'm into a small chub. Well, I say small, it's not as big as I would like or I want to catch. But actually, it's not too bad, is it? <laughs> Shouldn't sell myself short. As I've said, boilies for me do separate the bigger fish. And although I did describe it as small, it's not really, is it? It's a great fish. Regardless of size anyway, always welcome. Just as we hit proper chub time, i.e. dusk, not only one but two boats came through. Now I'm not complaining, boats have as much right to be on the canals as anglers of course. And if not for boaters, we probably wouldn't have the canal system that we have to fish in this country. So we certainly can't be complaining about people on boats. I'm just saying that I wasn't really looking forward or expecting or hoping or wanting or wishing boats to come through at this time. But they've come, they've gone, the canal settled and hopefully now I'll have 30, 40 minutes up to dark and then into it as well. I'm back in the car, ready to go home. I caught chub and bream once darkness set in. Anyway, football awaits on TV tonight. Fishing and football, not a bad life, is it? see my rod water's edge of course I'll show you in a little bit more detail now my tackle it's actually a fox barbel specialist and as you can see it's already made up ready to go the end is very interesting because you may have noticed on the video how it's obviously broken off well the quiver tip that extended another couple of inches, sheared off. So I just decided to cut it off, give it a go, and it works. It's fine. It enables me to play the chub properly, no issues at all there. It's sensitive enough to pick up the bites or when a fish is playing with a bait. So as long as it works, I don't care how it looks. My reel, now it's actually a very cheap Akuma reel. And this is something that I bought Oh, some years ago now. It was very cheap. I thought I'd give it a go. It's no good for barbel or carp or bigger fish, but for chub, absolutely perfect. It does have a bait runner facility, but I very rarely use that. In fact, I don't use it at all. For the sort of fishing I'm doing on the canal, after chub, up to about six pound, well, it's perfect. My line is six pound Maxima. That's an old favourite of mine. I've used that for many years. In fact, I've used that for many decades. It's never let me down. It's always been a, a great line, especially for the four, five, six pound bracket that I do a lot of my fishing in. And then I'm about to take the Velcro band off right now. Then you can see my end gear. The business end, if you like. I've got a third of an ounce lead, a small bead, a swivel, and I've got five inches, six inches perhaps maximum, of five pound braid. And then, right at the very end, I've been fishing hair rig, of course. I've got a size six Drennan super specialist hook, and then my boilie goes on the end. Very simple setup, but as you've seen in the video, it works. Session number four, we had another one of those storms during the night. They give them names now, don't they? Frank, Desmond, Barney, three that immediately come to mind. Three that I've actually fished through as well. 
Anyway, we're at the tail end now. I think the north of England and North Wales suffered the brunt of this particular one. I've got the tail end down here in the Midlands. The rain has eased off a little bit. The heavy downpours have now just become standard rain. And the severe winds during the night, because we did have gusts of up to 50 miles an hour, they've also dropped off as well. I'm making the most of every opportunity. I was able to work my day perfectly today, work this morning, and then get out this afternoon as the weather starts to get a bit more reasonable. But, as I always say, unless you're bait in the water, you'll never have a chance. It doesn't matter what the conditions are like, as long as you choose your swim carefully, with safety in mind, get out there and give it a go. I'm into a fish. Feels pretty decent, I'll tell you something. They know exactly where to go, don't they? A few overhanging brambles down to my left. That's instinctively where they head. Anyway, I've got this one out into open water. I'm not gonna waste any more time. I'm gonna bring it in, net it. The next time you see me, I'll hopefully have a fish in my hands, cradling one for the camcorder. It's a nice fish, isn't it? Fantastic. I think it's going to get dark quite early today. You know the sort of thing, very wet, overcast, murky and dreary. But you know what? I'm watching a rod tip and that makes me very happy indeed. I haven't seen a single soul while I've been here. This is the black country. Normally see people up and down all the while. Bikes, walking, dogs, all that sort of thing. But no one's venturing out today. And occasionally I'm reading through the internet, social media. I'll see posts from anglers and I'm not being critical by the way when I say this along the lines of oh, it's raining today I think I'll give I'll give it a miss I was planning to go out but it's a little bit windy so I'll stay at home you know if we want to be successful in our angling and who doesn't we all want to catch better fish don't we bigger fish we all want to enjoy it it's all part of the experience if we want to catch more better bigger and progress in our angling the thing is you just have to go anyway and I love the great outdoors. Of course we're all like nice, warm conditions, but it's not about that. It's about enjoying and making the most of what's out there in front of us. And I'm certainly doing that today. I'm gonna to fish into dark and hopefully I'll add to my chub that I've caught already. I'm back home now. I continue to catch fish after dark. Some nice chub actually. Really enjoyed that session. I'm showered. I'll be going to bed shortly. And I've got my dancing chairman t-shirt on. Now, if you saw Sky Sports News way back at the start of the football season, when the draw was made for the Champions League, TNS pulled out B36 Torshow and Mike Harris, the TNS chairman, was on Sky Sports News. The dancing chairman, he was called. Well, I've got the t-shirt Right on dusk, session four, I think most people would agree it wasn't a particularly nice day. In the copse behind me, I heard a song thrush in full song. I couldn't see it, I was trying to identify it, to try and capture it on camera, but it was well hidden. No doubt at the top of a tree somewhere, because that's what they do, but as far as I was concerned, well hidden from me. But it made me think, there it was. It was a murky, horrible day. I hadn't heard one single bird call or certainly singing at all during the day. And there he was, that single song thrush at dusk. It reminded me of what we should be like in life. When life throws everything at us, adversity comes our way, negativity befalls us, all those things, we have the choice. Do we withdraw in ourselves and hide ourselves away like a lot of birds did? on that particular session, tucked up in a, a bush or a hedgerow somewhere, waiting for the weather to change, or do we do what that song thrush did? Come out into the open, top of a tree, and singing for all it was worth. Well, I think we know the answer to that one, don't we? As we go into 2016, we move on into the new year. Let that be a lesson for all of us. When life comes against us, rise to the challenge, and don't let it squash us. 
I hope you've enjoyed the video. As always, I've enjoyed putting the clips together, especially the ones Bankside. Some nice chub put it in appearance this time round. Some good fish in the Black Country Canal network system. Check it out for yourself if you're in the area. But finally, I know advertisements can be a nuisance, but I do run a small charity that works in Africa and I've monetized the videos so that the finance that comes through from people watching the ads goes directly into the charity. So if you could do that, even occasionally, that would be very much appreciated. Out and about yourself, tight lines, and I'll see you next Saturday.